Hello everyone and welcome to the second of today's webinar, webinars where we're going to be looking at the forex market again, but this time just ahead of the US session. But as always before we start, <clears throat> excuse me, may I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know is on your screens, please. Uh, you must always remember this can be a very risky business, so please don't ever use money that you cannot afford to lose. And for those of you who have not come along before, this is me on the left and accompanied by my husband. We Both of us will be looking at the markets through the prism of volume price analysis, which, as I mentioned this morning, this morning's webinar again, um, has been our methodology, our preferred methodology for the last oh, 20 odd years or so. But we also now have that supported with our quantum trading tools. And I know visitors to this webinar and also uh, watch the recordings afterwards, we have a real mixture. We have um, new people, we have uh, traders who've just bought the books, traders who have some of our indicators, or all of our indicators, and traders uh, who are also on the Forex program. But you know, whoever, whatever category you fall into, welcome and we will get started straight away so i'm just going to move this out because what i was going to suggest was rather than go through the preliminary um, um introduction that we had this morning because this morning we were looking at the british pound for a number of reasons not least because it was in a very strong uh, a down move but also we looked at uh, what's driving the the, uh, the markets at the moment? Yes, there is the fundamental news. That's obviously the, the, the technical picture that you see on the chart, but we also covered uh, the political risk, which is now, which we now have to factor in to our trading. And this is something that really, really didn't exist in this, in the way that it is at, at the moment, this, this impact that we have at the moment when David and I first started. You would have something called geopolitical risk. That could be, as I said this morning, oh, just take an example. Um, there would be, um, some problem with the disruption to uh, oil supplies, uh, the closure of the Straits of Hormuz or something of that nature. That would be, it was, when something like that happened, everyone would in the market would know that oil would be impacted, there would be flows to safe havens, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Things are very, very different now. Obviously, the UK, we have Brexit. And as David mentioned this morning, we have Donald, God love him and his Twitter feed. And we certainly have, you know, going on in the background, all the issues with the uh, the trade, uh, the trade tariff, it's a trade tariff war, really, war of words and, and actions. They may not be firing bullets at each other, but uh, it's, a, it's a war nonetheless. And that's something that is very, very new. So not only do we have to contend with the price action, have to do analysis, as I said, we use VPA because VPA volume price analysis is really is the we believe the only methodology which gives some authenticity to what you see on the chart and also the fundamental news. And we're going to talk about that in relation to the British pound and particular cable because that is also um, and how that is impacted with congestion phases, uh, sessions, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But as I said, that's what I'm going to say on this now. I would suggest you go and say watch the first, is it 15 minutes or so from this morning where we cover that in more detail. And while I get my, uh, my all my charts uh, sorted out, I'll pass over to you. Oh, sorry, caught me unawares there. I was just uh, hunting around, uh, looking at uh, all the other markets as well. Apologies and a very warm welcome from me. Good to have you here today. Hope um, the weather is uh, good where you are and uh, it's not the middle of the night. I know we have uh, traders from all around the world join us at all different times of the day and night. So a warm welcome. If this is your first time of coming along today, uh, a warm welcome too. I know we've got uh, quite a few regulars in the room also, but if it's your first time, if you have any questions, we're quite happy to answer them uh, either uh, in the chat box if they're short questions or if they require a more detailed answer, we will answer them on air for you. Anna's just sorting out her chance there. And um, as you've no doubt been watching, the British pound has been under the cosh. It's been under the cosh for several days now and like to continue to do so. The only thing I would say, just as a heads up to 
particularly uh, tomorrow, which as I'm sure many of you are aware, we have the European elections going on in the UK, within Europe, still, currently, just. The results of those elections are not due until the Sunday evening. So if two things, first of all, if you're holding positions over the weekend, just be aware of that fact because there will be huge volatility. And if the result is as expected, where from the UK perspective, at any rate, there is a massive move to support the Brexit party, which is what the polls are suggesting by some distance and appalling results for our current mainstream um, um, uh, of uh, parties of uh, Conservative and Labour particularly, then that is probably going to have a, a, a serious impact on the pound. We may well see a gap uh, up open or, or uh, lower. I, was, I would expect it to be lower. Uh, so we'll probably see a gap down. Uh, these, we had one last weekend, which was uh, certainly on the Aussie, I think, from the uh, results there. Again, po politics playing a huge part. So it was a gap up in that case, and that gap is now being closed. So just a heads up, that is what is going on over tomorrow and into the weekend. So do not be surprised to see gaps, gap down, particularly for the pound, pound pairs, if that result does indeed hold. And uh, from there on, expect volatility on Monday as well, and probably further selling of the pound in due course. I'm going to pass back to Anna, and we will get going. The excitement around with Brexit, we, we do, it's easy to over, uh, overlook that um, we're moving into obviously the, the US session now. And we've got core retail sales up at uh, Harpers One for Canada. And of course, today is FOMC Minutes Day. So more volatility later on, uh, well, seven o'clock our time as well. So a really a very busy day for both fundamentals and, as I said, the, uh, the, the political uh, element uh, that is now that makes now makes that part of the market very very quickly this is the uh, CSI with the matrix above just to give us a, a flavor of where the currencies are at this point after the um, after the uh, moves in uh, uh, London earlier on I've got the three minute the 10 minute the 30 minute I tend to use the 30 minute or the hour as a kind of benchmark um, because I'm when I'm on the faster time frames I need to know what I'm trading against as it were um, I have the daily up for some context to see whether the overall on the day the the, the bias is is bearish or bullish but for the kind of time frames that I'm uh, that I'm looking at as I said on the faster ones my benchmark chart um, you know what am I what am I looking to trade against it would either be the 30 or sometimes the hourly chart now if I'm trading the hourly chart then my benchmark would be obviously much further out it could possibly even be the daily chart and we, we can see here very very clearly uh, what has happened over these time frames of the um, of the pound pairs let me just I've got the Aussie there let's put the pound up uh, we can see here that the pound uh, fairly comprehensively sold uh, during the morning session. It's beginning to see a bit of a tick up as we as uh, as, as the, that selling has come to a, a pause, as it as you would expect. And the the pair that where it's really been hit pretty hard is the uh, against the Swiss franc, and the Swiss franc is a is is a safe haven currency as well and what I have behind I just have a if you like the manual version of what you can see on those two indicators so if you've got the indicators what the indicators tell you first of all they tell you individual strength or weakness movement in the individual currencies and then what the matrix does it ranks the pairs uh, into which have been moving uh, the most if you like in this particular time frame now if you don't have those indicators then you know you can do this exercise manually I just have the daily charts for uh, the pound com what we call the pound complex and you can see here it's um, you know it's pretty much uh, red across as I said with the, the biggest moves in the pound Swiss as we can see here and I have a feeling there we are with really this move <clears throat> I was be I've been short up here at this point here I actually came out uh, a few days ago I didn't sort of uh, ride I haven't been riding this trend all the way down but then as a point of re-entry you've actually got this really nice breakaway 
from the volume point of control. The volume point of control is the, is the indicator that marks on the chart where we have a, a confluence of price, volume and time. In other words, the, the longest time that the price has been in this particular range and it's just a, a great indicator to have because it can help you validate breakaways, breakdowns, if you like, where you have a firm direction in one way or the other, which is really all we want to know. But let's go back to the uh, cable because what I wanted to highlight is um, <clears throat> is actually the three minute chart. And we were talking this morning, I think I might be too, I don't think I can capture what it was this morning. We were talking about consolidate. Let me move that to six minute and hopefully I can capture. There we are. Right. This was the chart. This is the six minute chart, but the three minute chart is obviously an expanded version of this. This morning, when we were looking at the, um, when we were doing the webinar, you can see here where cable was it was in a very 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 tight range and in fact the volume point of control was up here moving into the uh before the european open the move in the pound or the move lower in the pound was actually if you look at this time stamp we've got 842 that's at it in real time our time it's 642 with mt4 and 5 you have to one of the disadvantages of the platform i think is that it doesn't give you your local time it doesn't the stamp at the bottom of the chart it's either the time is it either the metaquote server or your broker mine always seems to be running two hours ahead so when i see 842 my local time is 642. this is where the volume point of control was this morning as i said if you watch the beginning of the, this morning's webinar you can see it we actually talk through the this waterfall and why it was it was a clean breakaway and what VPA was telling us at the time to validate the move lower. Then this is the uh, this is the reaction around London. Lots of volatility, lots and lots of volume coming in. And we ended the webinar at about 20 to 9 this morning, David. And what we and what I said at the end of the webinar, I said, Jeff, we've had the waterfall and now we're going to go back into consolidation. And the reason, because we were waiting for the CPI. So this is the period going up. This is, as you can see, 11.10, which is 9.10. And this was the reaction. We had a bit of a lift from the uh, from the CPI, but then what's happened is we have gone back into consolidation. The VPOC has moved down because this is now uh, moving sideways again. You can't say whether it's more selling or buying. All we can say is the market has decided that this, within this price range, between these pivots high and pivot low, I've also got fractals as well with the VPOC in the center. The price is not going, for the time being, not going anywhere, although it has, as I said, a bearish bias, certainly on the, on the daily. And um, what we've had subsequently is we've now had a break away again from the volume point of control. But look at this candle here. We've got this candle here. We had, uh, uh, it was on volatility, a second one on volatility, and we had a lot of stopping volume coming in. And that's sometimes what happens when you have crossover periods, whatever's gone on here in the London session, the traders coming into their, their desks say, well, that's awfully interesting, but we're going to, you know, it's, how do we interpret what we've seen here? Uh, the, the, I'm talking about the short term, uh, the shorter term time frames. And unless you understand the function of consolidation periods, of phases of price action, why they appear at different points on your chart, you are really going to struggle. And one of the things I really kind of really get cross about um, in on the internet and I read about people who say, I can give you three strategies to trade any chart at any time. Well, you know, that would that sort of it supposes that the chart is always kind of doing maybe you know one of three one of three things and and that's not always the case because you can have a consolidation period with no volatility you can have a consolidation period with a lot of volatility you can have a trend as we have here with a, a smooth trend with no volatility this is a trend but it's got volatility in it 
Why? Because we've had the volatility candles triggered. And while that before they were triggering, that would have been a lot of choppy backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Then you have the volatility triggered and you think, mm, you know, fast price action, that is not a nice smooth down trend. It, in hindsight, it looks like a nice smooth trend, but if you have the quantum tools, when these uh, when this indicator was triggered, it's not a smooth, not necessarily a smooth run down. But if you understand the, re the relationship between what is going on here with what is going on here, that will also keep you in this move. Now we're back in consolidation again. We've got a little bit of buying of the British pound. I just move over the CSI over here. I just want to undock this so I can change the time frame. Let's go down to the six minute chart that we're on here to match that as well. And we can see here exactly what I mean. You can see the buying that's coming into the pound. What it's being bought um, against probably more strongly is the uh, is the euro because the uh, the dollar that's the little move we're seeing now, but we can see the dollar actually beginning to tick up once again. Looking at our time charts, you say, well, where is this going to? Because it's all very well saying, yeah, I'm going to take maybe a very quick scalp to the uh, to the upside, but I need to know what levels it's going to are going to go to. Well, the chart tells you, first of all. The most important level on here is the volume point of control, which is uh, 26.68. If it manages to get back there, that is certainly the first major point of resistance. I haven't got the Camarilla on here. I'm just going to use the levels that are on the chart. And we have the um, sort of weaker levels here as printed by the support and resistance indicator here as well. If we move up the chart, let's see what the 30 minute chart is telling us. Well, we had a volatility candle down. Then we have got a retrace back into the uh, spread of this candle. It still looks weak because the daily chart, as we can see, it is very, very bearish at the moment. Um, what is what is interesting on this on this downwards move, uh, particularly yesterday, where we had this up, uh, strong up move when Theresa May was speaking, and then when we had the political reaction to what she was saying, there was a strong sell-off of the pound. What is worrying is, is the volume. The volume here is really not, um, doesn't really justify, or the price action doesn't sort of match the volume that is down here. So who knows? We will have to wait and see. But as I said, this, uh, for anything to do with sterling, it is really more political risk than fundamental. Now, when you you come to maybe you know you've missed this move and you can see the pound has been selling off strongly and do you want to join back do you want to try and capture some of that move down or do you want to wait for the reversal certainly on the time charts the faster time charts what we always suggest is you use the Renko. This is the Renko on the MT5. David has got his version on, in, on Ninja and we can go and see it uh, in action when we move over. And as you can see here, this is this strong move. This is the congestion period we've had further down. And this, and what's happening at the moment is trying to rally, trying to move higher. And this indicator, the way to use it, very simple. If you have it, you look at the trend dots, you look at the trend monitor, you uh, you wait for really you want the the bright colours to to match as you see here we had a, an effort to rise there we had the pivot come in but look at that that never went to the bright blue that stayed um, this dark blue and then the downwards trend was um, uh, re-established once again and that would possibly be a potential re-entry to the bigger downwards move, albeit we had a little bit of congestion in the way. So we'll see what happens with cable. And the other thing with price, when the market is like this, it's very easy to forget that there are other, there are other uh, um, pairs and other currencies that are moving because everyone's focus is on the British pound. And what I'm looking at here, I've got the Canadian that's been sold off. I've got the yen rising. The yen rising tells me that uh, market sentiment is a bit fragile at the moment, but I have to be aware with the Canadian, I've got retail sales coming up at half past one. Anything you want to say, David? Oh, by the way, if you've got any questions on anything we say, any of the indicators, whether you're a customer or not, or not, please just put them into the chat box and we'll be more than happy to uh, to, to answer them. Uh, really anything, anything trading related or indicator related or BPA related.
Just switching over to uh, Ninja Trader, that should be coming up on your screen any second now. There we go. And I've actually moved away from uh, the pound because um, it, um, great trading opportunities, but um, you know, that's all well and good. Um, but there are other, other things going on in the market also. And of course, as we move into the US session, then focus tends to rotate out of European currencies are much more into dollar centric and Canadian and so on and so forth. So uh, I've just all I've done here, I've just moved on to the Aussie yen. Um, oops, sorry, just move my headset for a moment. Um, primarily because just to I mean, this is Anna was looking at the the down move in uh, in cable. This is on a 30 minute time frame, but uh, the principles are exactly the same. This is for the Aussie yen. And this is just a nice example of confirmation of the bearish nature of this particular pair on this particular time frame, where you've got falling volume, uh, sorry, rising volume and falling price. So in that case, the two are in agreement because to for a, a move to develop strongly, you do need to see rising volume because it takes effort to fall as indeed it does to rise. So it's just a nice example there. It's not a particularly dramatic move. It's not a very strong move, but nevertheless, it's certainly signaled on the CSI and uh, across the market as well. And perhaps more importantly, just heading over to, let's have a quick look at the, the three indices themselves. What we're seeing right now is precisely that. This is the yen index. These are all on fast time frames. This is five minute. So we're seeing some pretty strong yen buying going on right now. And I'll show you why that is in a moment, but that's what we're seeing. So across the yen complex, it'd be a question of, of digging out those pairs which are ha perhaps moving more strongly uh, amongst them perhaps the Canadian yen would not be one of those purely because you've got uh, fundamental news coming up in what 20 minutes or so so that one may be in a congestion phase ahead of that particular release but certainly that's what we're seeing now we're seeing uh, yen buying quite strongly on the faster time frame this is the dollar let's just see what's going on the dollar we had a rally over the last sort of hour or so now it's sort of come off a little bit now as we get into the US session and we're seeing some over on the right hand side there we go that's the euro we've seen some euro buying and that's just now peaking out topping off at that level so the one really that's uh, focuses the mind is the yen and the reason for that is very simple if I go over onto the indices which I've got down at the bottom here I've got the three primary indices the top level is daily so you've got the YM the ES and the NQ up at the top line and down at the bottom, we've got the uh, the five minute equivalent for those. And as you can see, pretty much throughout the morning, pretty much the same. That's what we've been saying. This is, as Anna said, Ninja Trader is great because it does give you the timestamp associated with your local time. So this is where we are. This is uh, 1.15 in the afternoon for us. And this was uh, 11.15, so basically a couple of hours ago. And again, you've got a really nice example here. You've got a, a, a trend, a downwards trend that's developing quite strongly. And you've got this nice, uh, inclination, this rise in volume that's associated with it, and it really is looking rather weak at the moment. Not sure if Donald's involved yet, probably still asleep, maybe. Um, but uh, there we go. So it's you know, it's the trade wars again, it's nervousness about all of that and, and everything else. But when sorry, Dan, oh, there's all sorts of stuff going on, but essentially, what we're seeing reflected in the yen is very much reflected in the indices themselves because it's uh, it's risk off at the moment and um, you know no one is is there's been this nice trend throughout the morning on rising volume had a volatility trigger on that last candle if it clears that moves on down then we're through into pretty light volume on the volume point of control so expecting that to move deeper still trend monitors uh, nicely red holding us in even through these little pullbacks and reversals, which are part and parcel of every single price chart you ever look at. And again, you can see on the trend monitor, the transition, we went from bullish into bearish with only one color change into dark red. It skipped the darker blue, which we had over here. Doesn't always follow that you get that uh, traffic light sequence, if you like, of, of dark, uh, bright blue, darker blue, dark red, and out the other side into bright red, and obviously vice versa going the other way. Uh, doesn't always follow like that it will just depend how quick the move is and on this occasion it was a very solid bearish trend developing we moved through all these various levels 
we went through the volume point of control itself. We're low volume node. We went through there very quickly. And also through this next volume, low volume node here, we sliced through there very rapidly as well. Obviously not what we've now got to face is that in an hour and a quarter or so, the cash markets will be opening. This is trading on Globex. So what you're looking at here is a chart of pure electronic trading. The cash markets are not running. This is a 24 seven market. So you can trade this, this market uh, outside of the cash markets when they're closed. But what it does indicate is that even when the cash markets are closed, the volume profiles here are perfectly uh, tradable. They are, uh, you can compare one with another. And all that happens once the cash market opens is these will all then be compressed down to a much lower level. But from a comparative purpose, it's exactly the same principles. Obviously, what we can't do once the cash market opens is flip flop between the two and compare the electronic with what is going on in the cash when it runs in tandem with Globex. Just head back to there. Let's have a look. Let's just have a look at the uh, some of the yen pairs. I've got the Aussie yen. Let's try. Um, let's just see what's happening on the CAD yen because that'll probably be in congestion ahead of the news. Let's take a look at that one. Just waiting for that to load up. Yeah, I mean, it's had a, a, a decent rally over the last few days. Nice up candle yesterday, good volume. We had uh, quite a lot of buying coming in under this candle, more buying under this candle following this downtrend. And no surprise to see the market trying to rally. But this is the price action we're seeing at the moment, a, a razor blade of price action. No great surprise. This is on 15 seconds, so this is uh, lightning quick right now. But, um, you know, if you go up onto the five minute, Markets are calm. Markets are now waiting for the uh, the news to be released in the next 15 minutes and will then react accordingly. Uh, let's have a look at the Swiss yen. I'll just wait for that one to load up. Got a decent rally on that. Again, coming to a little bit of a pause point, but a nice rally on that, certainly on the 30 minute. And again, Nice example of VPA in action here. You see we've got, uh, this is from 12 o'clock, we've got rising price, rising volume. So it's just confirming. But on that last candle, what have we got? Wick to the upper body, decent volume below. Probably expect a, a little bit of a pause point as a result now, purely because we've got some selling involved in this particular candle. But if the market continues on higher up to this region, up to 109 spot 60, then we've got a low volume node here. So we would expect the market to move through there pretty rapidly provided it's associated with good volume. Again, you can see on the trend monitor, here we went the other way, we went from bearish into bullish. On this occasion, again, we skipped one of the transitional colors. We went, uh, we didn't go dark red, we went straight through into dark blue and out the other side into bright blue, supporting the move higher as we move away and break away from the volume point of control down here. Let's just head back to the CSI and see what's going on and the matrix as well. Let's just head over here. This is on 15. This is the yen buying that we're seeing right now. We're seeing selling on the Canadian at the moment. This purple line is falling quite strongly. We've got the, the Japanese yen rising, the magenta. That's the selling we're seeing on the Aussie, the blue line on 15. It's gone to five. Now starting to see a bit of a tick up in the Aussie. You can see the blue line there starting to kick up. We're seeing some buying coming into the Euro. So in terms of which pairs are likely to be moving and now pausing, certainly in terms of the Aussie yen, that's why we're seeing a bit of a pause coming in because the Aussie is now rising with the Japanese yen. So in other words, you've got buying on both currencies. The same will be true of the Euro. Again, we've got buying of the Euro and buying of the yen and buying of the Swiss franc. So those are all essentially moving in the same direction as indeed is the New Zealand dollar down here. So really in terms of looking at opportunities on the yen, it's either looking at something like the dollar yen where we've got selling of the dollar and buying of the yen or alternatively the CAD yen, but then the CAD probably is knocked out purely because we're so close to a news release anyway. So it might be an idea to look at perhaps the dollar yen. Let's just see what's happening on 15 in terms of that. OK, it's got a little bit of a way to go. Got down almost to oversold, kicked back up. Now it's uh, kicking back down again. But uh, the yen is still rising quite solidly at the moment and driven very much by risk sentiment, as I outlined on the indices. 
so if we head back to let's go back to the time frame charts again let's just pop in the dolly in see what's going on there <clears throat> There we go, and that's just loaded up. And again, you can see you know, there's more VPA examples here. Here we go. Uh, we've got a nice the three candle arrangement. We've got rising volume, falling price. So again, it's just one is confirming the other, and just giving us a signal of that that bearish sentiment on this particular time frame, which is 15 minutes. Let's pull up the five minutes. See what we've got there. Good strong volume coming in, lots of selling under that last candle. Market's trying to rally. Be interesting to see how this particular volume closes off on this candle, whether it's strong enough to create some reversal or whether it's just simply the market trying to rally into weakness. Insiders, market makers selling into that weakness before taking it further lower. And this was an example of the trend monitor doing the full spectrum of, of colors, went from the bullish into the darker blue into the darker red and the transitional through out into the bright red as the trend lower starts to develop. Now moving into low volume ter territory in terms of the volume point of control. So down at this level, once we get through uh, this area here at 34, 33, 32 odd, then you would expect the market to go through there fairly quickly because the volume profile is very light there. The support and resistance is, is we look at it from two different perspectives, the traditional one, of price but using the volume the VPOC itself and the histogram on the right hand side of the chart to give us a heads up in terms of concentration and density of volume in those regions price will act as support and resistance but then so will volume these levels here are based on price as they are on MT4 and MT5 so the the wider the line the dash line then the stronger that region of price resistance or price support is has been developed the number of times it's been tested but in terms of volume where you get very heavy, heavy concentrations of volume for example around the volume point of control where you've got the greatest uh, volume uh, concentration on the chart then those are regions where you expect price to pause congest purely because you've got orders masses of orders sitting there because price has been uh, at that region for some considerable time. What the volume point of control does, it brings in the element of time. In looking at this relationship here, this is very much a linear relationship between volume and price. But when you look at the histogram here, this is, brings time in because what time does is it then um, denotes the amount of time that a market has been in congestion and therefore the heavier concentrations of volume. So volume, price, and time is up, is up the y-axis, whereas volume and price is on the x-axis. And what this is telling you is where you've got heavy areas of volume, you expect the market to struggle at those regions because it's got to battle its way through in exactly the same way as on price-based support and resistance uh, is also um, a factor in, in where markets pause and why they pause there. And leading on from that is a further question which is this that if a market has paused at a particular level then clearly that level is important and therefore you expect the market to pause at that level again if it's revisited so you have these regions which act as price resistance and price support for very for very different reasons not least because one of them is the market considers them important if the market doesn't consider them important it doesn't stop at that level and therefore, in the future, when the price revisits it, you expect it to move through very quickly. And that's why it's so important that that's what this, this indicator tells you. It reveals clearly and simply where you've got low volume regions and higher volume regions and the anticipation of what price is like to do once it gets to those levels. As I said, right down the bottom here, if we do move lower, then this region here is very lightweight. There's very little. In fact, there's no price uh, support there either. So you would expect the market to move through there pretty swiftly. Just check out what's going on on the other time frames. Okay, and in terms of looking at it from a daily perspective, then for this particular pair, then what we're looking at right now is a market that's approached and is testing once again the volume point of control. 
So over the next few days, if this carries on, then you're going to see further congestion purely because you're in a heavy area of uh, volume and you are back at the volume point of control, which is the, the fulcrum of the market, if you will. In other words, 110 spot 60 is the, the price point which the market agrees is a fair price for the dollar yen right now. So there is no strong bullish or bearish sentiment one way or the other. Once that bullish or bearish sentiment starts to develop, then the market moves away from that fulcrum point, if you will, and on to other levels. Just going to hand back to Anna for a moment. Just gone back to cable for a moment there. Yep, I've got it here. Yep, I've put it back in. Just um, see where we're going. <clears throat> so the daily chart's exactly the same, pretty much identical. Put that one back down. Bit of congestion going on at the moment. Got a volatility triggered on 30, so you know the anticipation is we expect the market to congest, which is exactly what's happening at the moment. We had one here. These ones follow through. It doesn't automatically follow that when you get a congestion trigger that the market is automatically going to close inside the spread of the candle. It, it generally does. If it doesn't and follows through, that's fine. It's cleared that particular area of price and on you go. But we had one here to the upside, it then can reverse back inside, down to the downside, it then reverse back inside the spread of that one. Now we've got more volatility, now we're trading inside the spread of that candle. When you're using multiple time frames in this way, it just gives you so much heads up information as to why things are happening and the reasons for them. You can also see this is on the five minute for cable. We had the volatility triggered, then we had a ton of buying coming in of this candle. So we two reasons, if you will, to expect a reversal of some description. It's not huge. Bear in mind, this is, uh, you know, 65. Sorry, this is uh, 50 up to 62. So this is only, you know, this is a 12 pip move. Nevertheless, it, it gives you an indication of, of use and using and applying VPA in whatever time frame you choose. But as you can see here, we had a ton of buying coming in here, big volume underneath it. And indeed, it's you know, we've seen this reversal. Now, what are we expecting? Well, we're going to claw our way back up to the volume point of control, which is sat here. So we're not expecting, I'll just pull that over a little bit. A lot of congestion. We're not expecting this market to, to rocket higher or certainly uh, probably lower in due course. But uh, we've also got some price based resistance here. You may, may not be able to see it, but where my cursor is here, we've got some pretty well defined regions there. We've also got another one up here just at 70 odd. So between the volume point of control and those two regions of price-based resistance, there's a ton of stuff now sitting overhead to hold this market up and prevent it from really moving up in any dramatic way. You'll see we've got some transitional colors coming in now. So there is a pause in terms of the, the strongly bearish trend for the time being, but that's not a great surprise. And obviously, if you're out on the slower time frames, once you go out to 15 and 30, you know, there's not a flicker of a change in terms of the trend monitor there. You wouldn't expect it because it really hasn't registered as yet as any potential sign of a pause point even in the longer term bearish trend on a 30 minute time frame or indeed even on the 15 for the time being. Obviously, if that does follow through, if, for example, on the five minute, this develops into something more meaningful, then clearly what happens is the trend monitor changes here first and then gradually ripples its way through across the time horizons. But, you know, that is going to take a little while. And until if and until that does happen for the time being, traders out here on the slower time frames are just looking at this as a, a reversal, which happens in all time frames. And the market is just, you know, pausing and remaining firmly bearish for the time being. Let's just see where we are on the CSI in terms of the pound. There we go. 
That's on 15, and obviously you need to go out to 30, probably up to an hour. You know, it's still very heavily oversold, but at some point it will start to recover. And as always, when you're looking at the, the CSI as the starting point, it's whether you're looking to jump into a trend. For example, you look at something like the Aussie yen, which is a good example right now. Aussie is falling quite nicely and the yen is rising quite nicely. Now, jumping into that one means that you've actually lost quite a lot of the trend that's already underway, this sort of area. The uh, benefit to that is that when you place your stop loss on your position, then it can be much tighter because that trend is already developing nicely. Alternatively, if you look at something like the Swiss franc and the pound, if you decided that, uh, well, actually, do you know what? The pound's been absolutely battered. Politics to one side, let's assume this is you know, not overridden with politics. If this was just a regular currency pair, you'd be looking at that and thinking, well, OK, the pound's very solidly oversold. Swiss franc's equally solidly overbought. I'm going to look at that as a reversal. And I'm going to take a position in the market, look at the chart. What's it telling me? Look at the other indicators. Yeah, that look all looks fine. Put your uh, position in the market. Your stop loss would have to be relatively wide. In this example, it might be 20, 30 pips even maybe, which sounds a lot, given that in a scalping opportunity, you might be looking at four or five, for example. But that's what you have to cater for, because you've got to allow for this uh, buffering that's going on. This is staying here. Swiss franc might stay up here for a little while, but at some point it will move and it will start to sell and the pound will start to buy. And at that point, you are then in a strong position because you've got in at the start of the trend. And the reason you've got in at the start of the trend is because you have paid a higher price of entry. Your entry ticket is 30 pips. The 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 uh, traders who then join thereafter, who join the trend underway, they pay a lower price because they've lost some of the trend already. So, you know, that's the payoff. So getting in early, it's like a good seat at a theatre or whatever you, you go out. If you want a good seat, you have to pay for it. It's exactly the same principle here. If you want the best seat in town, you pay a premium for it. If you want the, the, the lower price seat, that's fine. Then, you know, that's up to you. I can see the Canadian dollar here. You see this purple line has just kicked up. The news must be out because it's half past one here our time. So the news has just been released. Just have a quick look, see if that's uh, that's come out yet. Where are we? Where are we? Here we are. Just refresh that. Let's see if that comes up. Yeah, nothing. To come out, nothing special. Slightly, slightly less. Okay. 1 1. Okay, one point one. I've got oil data anyway today. It's got one point seven. One point seven and one point one. So it's pretty good uh, for retail sales. Pretty strong. Um, so that should uh, should help the CAD. It's uh, strong on both. And then later on, of course, we've got uh, crude inventories down here, which again, I was saying this morning, I don't really understand some of the classifications that Forex Factory now apply. I've got to be honest, they do seem to apply an awful lot of yellow, in other words, tier three level to what Anna and I would consider certainly tier one or, or at the very least tier two and crude oil inventories would certainly figure in that because this will move the market. It may not be significant in terms of a longer term a move up or up or down, but certainly on an intraday basis, if you're trading a crude, then you've got to be aware of the oil inventories. You've got to be aware of uh, the impact of a build or a draw and what it means and the general trend in build or draw over the last few weeks. So it's an important release. So I find it very strange that some of these releases are. Right. The reason it's important, that's a good point, actually, because it's the core retail inventory. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it's very peculiar. The you know, it's uh, you know, it's like the pound this morning up here. You've got core CPI, and it's given a, a, a tier three, a yellow, in other words, significance. Now, as we said this morning, it was unlikely that the market was going to react very strongly anyway, because the dominant factor on pound right now is Brexit. Let's face it; there isn't another game in town, and, and you can have any news release you care to mention, unless there was a shock increase in interest rates, which just came out of the blue. But other than that, anything else is going to be of secondary interest, certainly of secondary impact in terms of its its impact on, on the pound right now. And certainly that was the case this morning because Brexit dominates. But I don't understand some of these rankings, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Just my opinion for what it's worth. Right, let me uh, pass back. Let's just, yeah, I'm just going to pass back to Anna, go back to the charts one last time. 
Here we go. So we're just on cable and, uh, you know, we're in congestion phase at the moment, but there we are. We've got the volatility triggered and we're just trading inside that range for the time being. We'll pass back to Anna. Pick off what David was saying. Yes, on the 30 minute chart, I've got it here. Because we've got this volatility candle, we're in the range of, of, of the candle. Um, and actually, I mentioned this morning that with the trigger of the vol volatility, it also gives you another resistance and support level. And if this is going to carry on higher, is it? there is pound buying, but it's also been driven by quite heavy dollar selling. And uh, this is how you sort of have to look at the pairs as well as you move into uh, the, the different Forex sessions, the, the, the currencies that become um, important local currencies, one of them being the Canadian and the other being obviously the US dollar. But, you know, to if, if we're looking at a, a, a decent move to uh, the upside, then we still have we, we still have to contend with this volatility candle on the 30 minute. Now, what's actually happening with the Renko here, my Renko is set on an ATR, and I think looking at the minute chart, it's uh, it's two, each brick is posted after 2.18 pips go through the market. And as I said earlier, really, we want to go that, we want to see that in bright blue while David was speaking, because these obviously these work in real time, this kept flipping flopping back from this uh, into this dark blue and then back to red but it looks as though it's trying to find a little bit of traction as it were after that huge sell-off this morning but you know and also looking at the uh, this is the six minute chart that i have here uh looking at the at the volume that's coming in well we've certainly got some buying under that because we've got a, a nice a deep wick to that candle then we have the next candle which again a lot of volume under there then we have a, a little down candle we have a sort of a, a, again this is an anomaly because you have a very compressed candle with a reasonable amount of volume underneath that if that was selling pressure that candle would be much uh, wider than it actually is there is there's definitely price support coming in here we can see that on the six minute chart of our csi we can see the pound i'm desperately trying to crawl its way back up but we can also see the dollar you know falling quite steeply it's uh, it's not quite on on oversold these numbers here by the way the 20 and the 80 on this indicator they don't actually per se are of any significance it was really to give some kind of reference a frame of reference to when is something overbought or over, oversold we can see here if you like this is the swiss uh, the swiss franc we said that, that of all the pairs in the session coming up to new york this was the pair that was at the bottom of our matrix and in fact i looked over at, at forex live and the uh, the pound swiss was the you know the the most down beaten as it were now what's interesting is we've got uh, the yellow line is kind of you know looking so it's it's turning uh, it's turning over slightly but there is still quite a lot of selling going on in the us dollar so that this move higher is really being propelled at the moment by the selling of the us dollar where's it where is it aiming for because we have to have a, a you know some kind of objective well the object the first objective is here which is at uh, the volume point of control at 126.68 and again if this is going to be a genuine move higher with both uh, volume and momentum well, certainly with the momentum with the Renko, we really do need to see this move into a bright blue, but it could be just capped or certainly pause at the VPOC that we have here. Going on to the 30 minute, where is that? That's at 26.70, which is the top of that candle, 26.69 which actually coincides with the top of the uh, volatility candle so that's how also you look at the confluence of of levels across the time frame so as i said the the the, the levels posted by the volatility candle are important that also corresponds with a level that we see here on a faster time frame and on a daily chart as we see here this is the candle this is the we can't probably can't see it very well this is the wick to the bottom of the candle that we're seeing at the moment as the price tries to push higher in the session ahead and you really have to see this session as 
by all means look at the price action you know compare it with what has happened in the session that's gone by but you actually have to see it it moves in its own universe because it's going to be impacted by the you know local news global news and political risk as well and just on the political risk side certainly for for brexit that um parliamentary questions are on at, at, at the moment which is a usual wednesday thing there's all sorts of rumors flying around that uh, her time is actually up maybe even by this afternoon but we shall see what happens what indeed. yeah indeed but so we shall see um anything else you want to say david or is that it i think we'll leave it there it'd be really interesting to see whether that can uh, move through um through the vpoc as is level wise it's the top of this candle if it if it goes through there if we move let's move down the time frame let's see to the 12 minute chart yeah i've got david hasn't have a 200 ma i have a 200 ma that's the next sort of resistance level as it were let me just put the camarilla on here as well because that will give us a um let's have a look where is it now let's give us our, our levels here let's have a look there we are. how does that care yep here we are this is what we have as well we have the s3 and these are potential price objectives for this move that we are seeing in progress so but we still haven't had a bright blue in the uh, renko which is what you want to see because it tells us there's going to be some momentum behind this move so maybe a little bit of patience and also keep an eye on the csi because we've also got the dollar coming down to quite oversold on the six minute we've got any dollar news coming up david i don't think we have have we let's have a look no we've got uh let's have a look we've got the fomc this evening we've got uh, uh some uh, a fed speaker and we've got the crude oil inventories but that's going to impact much more the do uh the canadian dollar and the uh, the canadian yen as a pair and also the dollar cap that's it anything else you want to say and on that happy note uh let me just very quickly because i think we've got some new people the um the indicators as I mentioned earlier, are from quantumtrading.com. This is the homepage of the site and the platforms that are available for the indicators at the moment. We're actually working on TradeStation at the moment. Uh, that's going to be a few weeks. A few weeks, David, depends how quickly we can work on the development. Yeah, they, they do take time, a little bit of time to, to code, but that should be coming on a stream. Then we, you can click on uh, the individual icons here to discover more about the indicators. If you just go in there and what you get behind the icon is a whole series of videos and support pages on um, why we develop the indicators and how you can incorporate them into your own trading tactics. Because both the thing about this is people say, well, what does VPA do for me? And what will the indicators do for me? VPA really tells you picks up the anomalies and really confirms the validity of any move but you can incorporate it into your existing tactics and similarly with the indicators as we've developed these indicators that you can take one take a few take the complete package that's entirely up to you you uh, still get seven day money back guarantee uh, if you buy one and then upgrade you will get a credit and you get david and myself we do uh, we do the webinars you can email us you get our fantastic support team behind you we do everything in our power to make you a successful forex trader and the last element that we've added is the actual program uh, where it includes the package of indicators you choose the platform and then you have all the modules and it really is we believe everything you need to know to make a success of this incredibly fascinating market and it really is as you know if you are trading it's just one of these things you might go away for a little while but you really can't help but keep coming back to it and even better you can make money at it anything else you want to say to that we are back we're back at quarter past three uh, where we are looking at uh, day trading just ninja not mt4 and mt5 uh, I think David does mainly that one. He carries, he does a lot of the heavy lifting of that one. But uh, I think you're looking, are you looking at gold today and the indices as well? 
Yes, he's, uh, so we did a big session on oil last week because we had some questions in from uh, one of our um, uh, one of our traders who just wanted to know a little bit more about uh, oil trading um, time frames and everything was sort of came together very nicely. And in, by the way, if you have any questions on anything that you'd like us to cover in these sessions, just drop us a line and we'd be more than happy to cover it. So enjoy the rest of the, the trading day. All sorts of stuff going on at the moment, as always. It just seems to get more and more, um, you know, um, hectic as these days go on. But that's just the, the way the markets are. Um, if you're not joining us later on this afternoon, we are definitely back next Thursday. So, okay, thank you for coming and we'll catch you next time. Take care.